so I've been out here doing the leaf thing, raking. That's what that's called. It's a gardening channel. I know what raking is. I have to get all the stuff cleaned up out of here out of this drainage path because the pool's open. Yay! I'm excited. I am excited. But uh, this is all gonna blow back over there. So I gotta get that scooped up. I was just using my hands, like throwing it into the bin. And then there's a centipede, so now the bin is on its side. And I'm just scooping that in. So I'm, I'm gonna make it work. I have like 20 minutes of daylight left, so <laughs> probably not gonna get too much done. Then in the morning, gotta go to Walmart and get some salt, get this thing up and running. You go ahead, make fun of me all you want to. This is one of the most brilliant things I've ever done. Look at that, and just scoop that in there. It works a lot better with two hands, but like, I mean, come on. It really, with two hands, this is, this is so simple. It, what's that? What is that? Anybody know? You know you're getting off to a good day when you order a venti and they give you a Trento. Look at, look how big that is. It sticks out of my Yeti. That's kind of nice. I'm definitely not going to complain about that. Especially, little. <laughs> I keep talking. This is not how things should start. I was about to say, especially with how much the coffee costs. I am at Walmart. I'm trying to get some pool salt. I'll have a look around the plant, see what's going on in there. Hopefully they have the salt. I usually get it from Sam's Club, but uh, Sam's, the only bags they had were all torn up. And that was a few days ago. I just figured I'd try here first. Okay, so conspiracy. I think they're trying to discourage people from doing their shopping on the garden side. It's sometimes I do park on the garden side and then do my shopping there because it's so much faster to check out over there. It's way too cold for these guys to be outside. It's like 57, but the lows are in the, like, 40s and 30s. Okay, that's the second card I've tried. They both keep pulling. They're hurting my wrist. Oh, look at all the Encore Azaleas. Aren't they pretty? I love Encores. Autumn Carnation is one of my favorites. It has semi-double blooms. They're a really pretty, like, bubblegum pink color. And I like the foliage on it, too. It's kind of glossy and shiny and just, oh, they're just pretty. Holy frickin' Mark Wahlbergs. They got a lot of them. Shitty Boston Ferns. They're not hard to find. They sell them everywhere. Okay, no pool salt. That's okay. I mean, it's really early, so I'm not super surprised by that. I really like the colors on these pansies. It's not like anything crazy, but they're just cute. It's like a little bit of sunset mixed in with that purple. Oh, they got impatience outside already? Well, that seems risky. They're on a rack though, so I guess that's probably so they can move them back in at nighttime, right? Aww, those are dying. Uh, what are you guys doing here? It's April, not September. How do they have mums out? You can force anything. Whole bunch of them. I mean, they're cool season plants, so it does make some sense. Just not expected. These marigolds are pretty. I love a nice marigold. I don't plant them, like, ever. I don't know why, because whenever I see them, I really, really enjoy them. Especially these ones with these great big poofy like pom-pom heads on them. They're nice. They're good to have around too Yeah, I think it's probably the colors like if they came in like hot pink or something like that or bright red I'd probably be more into them geraniums are looking nice tons of cyclamen good prices too. It's like 426. That's not bad These are the allure cyclamen. I don't know anything about those. I have to do some reading up on them. Whoa! That's a lot of polka dot plants. Just like Lowe's and Home Depot and everywhere else, they got plenty of cool season veggies. I actually, these are some nice starts on these romaine and I need to get going planting some of this up. So I think I might grab some of this. It looks all right. There you go, two of those. How do you guys like the expert potty mix? I've never tried it before. It feels nice. Do you ever like just kind of feel the bags? It feels nice and fluffy. I'm gonna grab a bag. I'm curious about it. Same thing with this Better Homes and Garden potting mix. I really like that they put a picture on there. Get an idea of what the soil looks like. Hmm. Let's get some of this too. See this one was 362 and this is 422, if you're wondering. There are a lot of annuals out here that shouldn't be. The pansies and dianthus, that's fine, but the impatience and the salvia, lots and lots and lots of begonias. I've learned with Walmart, at least mine, they get them in really, really early, and then they usually get some frost damage and they clearance them out for like a buck, so <laughs> I'll be waiting a couple weeks to be buying anything out here. 
My eye keeps getting drawn back to these violas. I think I'm gonna go ahead and get one. Did I call these pansies earlier? These are violas. Little, little baby pansies. Okay, none of this was supposed to happen. I need to get out of here. I'm not getting this, but I thought that people might want to see it. This is a raised bed. It's only $39.99. Now, five and a half inches tall wasn't tall enough. At least not in my opinion. I like for these to be at least a foot, because then you don't really have to worry about weed barriers or anything like that. But it looks like from this picture that you can stack them. Quality-wise, who knows? But like that's a really great deal for a, a raised bed kit. Now, you might have to replace it every couple of years. I don't know what to say about that. But yeah, I mean, it seems pretty cool for that much money. Hey, $8.98, that's pretty good for this. Think I'm gonna have to get that. Also, obviously, an avocado towel. Can someone please make an outdoor lava lamp? Really feel like that's the one thing that my garden is totally missing. All right, so before I go home, I'm stopping in here into We Thought Greenhouse. It's a local place, they grow out lots and lots and lots of annuals. And I just sort of want to get an idea of, like, what they're going to have around this year. Was that an exciting shot, watching me take my key out? I'm not going to be buying much, or maybe anything. Last year I had to get a lot of stuff because I had to prep early early. But this year... Oh, hey, <laughs> where did you come from? Last year I had to buy stuff early. I don't need to do that this year, but I want to see what they have. Sometimes they have some pretty good passion flowers in here, and um, hopefully some basket grass. It seems to be the only place I can find basket grass. Basically, it's like first dibs. I just want to make sure I can snag up anything they don't have a lot of. Also, this place is gigantic. They have a lot of succulents. I just walked in the door, and I'm surrounded. These are cute little blue elf aloes. I like those. Oh my goodness, there's so much. So much to take in. Yeah, see, so like if you wait a month and when it's really time to plant things outside, it's April 2nd. These will be a lot bigger. They'll look more like these. These are nice caladiums. The sangrias, I like those. And the white wonders are nice too. I like the little dark spots in the centers. That's neat. Oh my goodness. Look at all of these caladiums. Oh, guys, I can't wait. Soon. Really soon. Oh, they're so pretty! I think caladiums are one of my favorite annuals, partially because you don't have to treat them as an annual. They're pretty easy to overwinter. You just dig them up, lift them, keep them dry in a dark place. But they illuminate a shady area so well. Okay, there's a lot of noise behind me, but do you see? Look at, look at this. Look at, it just, it just, it just keeps on going. This is why I do a lot of damage here, because if I'm in here trying to find one little thing, look at everything you're surrounded by. I'm surrounded by trying to find it. Hey, these are pretty. Ray Classic Blue, I like those. I like those, that's just kind of my go-to here. Tons of coleus. And they have vegetables too. I'm not looking at that though, I'm looking at this. Impatience for days. All different sizes, Kelly Bracks. Gorgeous hanging baskets. I like the way they have things priced out. So everything in a red pot is $2.50. It's a good deal on these dragon's wing begonias. I'm thinking about filling one of the berms in my front yard with dragon's wings, and this might be the way to go. That's a good price. I was gonna do my own cuttings, but um, at a time and space, so not doing it now. I'll come back in a couple weeks, these will be like twice the size. I don't know, I'll get like probably 24, 30 of them. Okay, these are beautiful. Sometimes I have trouble finding these. So I'll just get one. Actually, just get two, just to be safe. Little Mardi Gras sweet potato vines. I like these. He's got really pretty. Oh, I need to go over there. Guys, I love lotus vines, but they are so freaking hard to get to bloom in a hot climate. It's just like impossible. I try them every year. I've only gotten to bloom one time. It's just too warm. One, what is that sound? Okay, believe me, that background noise is bothering me just as much as it is you. Look how pretty she is. That's nice. Hmm, five bucks, not bad. Uh, lots of bananas. I gotta go to the other side of the greenhouse. That sounds driving me crazy. I got some nice, some pretty standard ficus loratas. How much are these? 48 bucks, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Especially for this one, I don't, I'm not gonna get it. I don't need it, but look at it. It's got some really nice branching on it. $48. Good deal. Not seeing any passion flowers. Ooh, look at that foliage. What are you? Padilla. Perilla. Nice. 
Okay, these are cool. These are scented geraniums. The variety is called Orange Fizz. But look at the foliage on these. They don't have any flowers on them. But that foliage is really cool. Hey, that's nice. They have little starts on the Alpinia Zarembas and lots of fungus gnats. But uh, what's even nicer, they got Alicantia Freideck over here, $7. That is a good deal. Now, which one to get? This one's got a couple of plants in it. Anyone else got multiples? Whoa, this one's about to go crazy. My gosh, these fungus gnats though. I'm gonna be treating these like crazy. I'll put some neem and DE powder on those when I get home. Something smells really bad over here. I'm not sure what it is. Okay, and then I walked like two more feet and something smelled amazing. What's going on? Sensory overload. Wow, you can smell this from like five feet away. It's curry. What kind of curry are you? Hello, Christmas? I don't know. It smells great though. It smells fantastic. It smells like it smells like curry. Oh, pretty flowering aloes. Super tunias, Vista bubblegum. These, the Bovella red begonias. These are supposed to get really pretty. Might be nice in a hanging basket. Look at the comfy, isn't that pretty? It's really big. What a gorgeous pulmonaria. This variety is called Silver Bouquet. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that foliage, that's gorgeous. Hey, hey what's up, Steel Bay? Mighty Chocolate Cherry. I know it's hard to hear me, guys, I'm sorry. I'm trying. These are beautiful. That nice dark foliage with that really pretty fuchsia flower. I really like these. Like, I like them a lot. I mean, they're suffering a little bit, but those flowers are like, Electra. They have a lot of different lamiums, which is great because I have the white Nancy at home and I wanted to mix that in with some different varieties. They have the white Nancy, they have this one right here, which is purple dragon, and then what is this? Pink pewter, beacon sil- did I say pewter? Pink pewter, and then beacon silver, and they have variegated ones too. Really, really, really pretty variegated lamiums, but I don't know how well they'll work with what I'm doing. I think I might grab a few of these. They're only a dollar ten. It's forever purple hookahs. Oh, these are gorgeous. Okay, how much though? Because the little guys, these four inch pots, are a dollar ten. How much are you? Oh, I like these plumbagos too. I got distracted very quickly. I'm supposed to be looking at a price for something. I love these Jacob's ladders. How much are the six inch pots? Oh, <laughs> look at that. It was right there. Five bucks. It's not too bad. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Look at that. Midnight Rose Hookara. These are stunning. Alright, I'm home, got some things to plant. It's like gonna be pretty quick here though because it's supposed to start raining, but what I've done here is I went and I drilled three holes in the bottom. I would drill more, but my drill died, and this is fine, it's plenty, it'll do. I mean, not really, it'd be ideal to have more or bigger holes, but you know, sometimes you just gotta work with what you got. Also, guys, I already had a six pack of lettuce. Why didn't you tell me? Now I have so much lettuce. And I guess this would be as good of time as any to go ahead and pop these open, see what the soil looks like. Oh, hey, look at this. I actually, I like this. It's got some nice, like, lift to it. It's airy, lots of chips and organic material in it. It feels like it'll hold on to some moisture, but not for too terribly long. That's not bad. I like that. It reminds me a little bit of like stay green, but better. I like this consistency. I like that a lot actually. It's nice, rich, organic soil. Like, it's not just peat with perlite in it. Then over here, this one is much more sandy. It's darker. Color of this reminds me, do you guys remember like the Hyponics from back in the day? I mean, back in the day, they might still sell it, I don't know. But even though it has all this material in it to help it drain, yeah, see, it still holds together some. I feel like this one's going to hold on to a lot more moisture, probably, than this one over here. But I don't really know. They're both looking like they're going to be really good soils, especially for what they're costing. Like, not bad. Between the two, just like going off a of first glance here, I haven't used any of these yet. I think I like this one better for, like, everyday use, for just, like, your general planters, general types of things. I think this would be a really, really great one for that. A little bit more universal in um, its 
what's it called? Composition, I guess. Whereas this one over here, I think, like I use drip emitters for my perennials and my potted plants and everything. I feel like this one's going to maybe hold on to water for too long, but it might drain a little bit better. But I think it might stay wet longer. So I don't know. That's one of those things where you kind of have to play with your soils a little bit and see how they work for you. But for this, I'm just gonna go with the expert. Use some of that. Hey, you know what? I actually, I'm really liking this. I Like I said, I haven't like used it or seen my plants grow in it, but I like the composition. I like the consistency. I like what I'm seeing with the organic matter in it. It's going to, with that, obviously have to keep in mind that it's going to decompose more quickly, which will release nitrogen, good things, and promote uh, good bacterial and fungal growth and like good things that you want in the soil around the roots. But it also will compact a little bit more quickly. So if this were something I was using for a house plant, then I would make sure around the 18 month mark to really keep an eye on the drainage and make sure it's not compacting too much and kind of like turning into almost like a mud. But for something like this, I think this is fantastic. I don't have quite enough though, so I'm going to need to, one, get this sticker off of here, maybe. Maybe not, I can just flip it around, might do that. But uh, th I need, I'm gonna have to blend in some of the other soil. Go ahead and pour some of that in. Just kind of mix it in. It'll be fine. Okay, so I'm gonna toss this together. Also, I it's just part of the mess. Things are happening. I have a broken pot I gotta fix. It's just that time of year where we're sort of getting things put back together. I wanna do lettuce in this. I'm not gonna be able to do very much. This isn't that big, and romaine gets big, but I'm gonna kinda cram it in there for appearance sake and then thin it out when I have to. And this is just red leaf romaine and green leaf romaine. It's nothing special, nothing like crazy. They're looking pretty good. They're not root bound, so that's good. Go ahead and drop a red in there, and then I'll put a green in and just kind of try and get some color. That looks nice, but like way too much, I know, because this is really going to fill out in no time. Romaine needs a decent amount of space. I'm actually planting this up for my tortoise, so it's not going to last that long. It's not gonna take its time to get to maturity. Otherwise, I would make sure to space them further apart. I mean, I would probably have one head of lettuce in here. And eventually what I'll do there is I'll go ahead and I'll probably end up leaving the one in the center. And then once these have probably doubled in size, I'll go ahead and just kind of scoop them out and plant them up somewhere else. But for now, I think this is cute. Let's put something else in here. Maybe some pansies. I was able to divide that up into three separate chunks. So that worked out really well. So I'll go with one there, one there. I'll do another one here. They look better when they're planted. And for a trailer, since so far everything's edible, violas, not pansies, but you know, potato, potato, but kind of not really. Over the front, I'm thinking this creeping thyme, which I did see at Walmart, but I already had this from Lowe's. I really like creeping thyme. It's a really, really tough, hardy plant. I still have some that overwintered. It almost stayed evergreen through our winter, and we had a really rough winter. I went ahead and threw a bacopa there in the middle just because I had it, so why not? Cute, simple, I like it. It'll do, I just kind of wanted to throw together something. I've wanted to plant things for months now, so I'm just happy to be out here and be gardening. For longevity purposes, I didn't do this. I'll explain why in just a second, but uh, there are dwarf lettuces or just smaller lettuces. There's lots of butter crisps and things like that. That would work better in here for longevity. Like I said, though, with the tortoise, my sulcata, Romaine's his jam. That's kind of where I stick with him. That's really just what he prefers. Uh, and I feed him small and mature Romaine and big mature. So this works for what I'm doing, but it's not really practical for most people. So I would use a dwarf lettuce or something else. Once this fills out, it'll look an awful lot better. I do. I kind of like it. This Bacopa, though, the only issue with that is that this stuff's very vigorous. So it could become a little bit too aggressive to have in there with that creeping thyme. So I have to keep an eye on that. It's not a big deal. I'll end up just having to pull it out. The pansies, you know, they're more of a cool weather plant. Sometimes they do well during the winters, or I should say sometimes they do well during the summers, but probably not in the same container as lettuce, which is going to want a lot of sunlight in the summer. I always have to move pansies and violas someplace a little bit more shaded and cool. So that might, you know, just be something that's going to be in there temporarily. I mean, really all of this is. The time that has some longevity to it. I'm looking forward to watching that kind of grow over the edges. The thing I love about Creeping Time is it's just dainty. Its foliage is detailed. I like the reddish pink stems. It's just a nice, pretty plant. It has a nice, delicate effect to it, and you can use it. It smells nice. 
went ahead and grabbed those mollies like I was talking about doing last week. They didn't have a name, they're just assorted premium mollies. They're pretty, I don't know. I did the sex ratios off. There's one female in here and three males. That's backwards, should be uh, three females to one male, but that's all right. Out there in the pond, there's going to be plenty of other females. There, I mean, there are plenty of other females, so they'll be okay. She won't be harassed too much, but they're really pretty, aren't they? As far as sexing them goes, you can see this big white one, how it kind of has something that looks a little bit like a, I don't know, a piece of cartilage or a straw on the bottom of it. That's the appendage that lets you know that that's a male. Hey, Plunkin. Good morning. How you doing, baby girl? Say hi to the vlog. Wow, your eyes are beautiful this morning. All right, well, that, that was fun hanging with you. I'm gonna give them a little while to float and temperature adjust, and then I'll move them in. If you didn't see last week's vlog, I talked about I was gonna go to PetSmart and grab some mollies because the mollies are really good at eating the insect larvae. A lot of fish are, most fish will eat insect larvae, but the mollies do a good job. They're pretty tough, they're pretty hardy, they reproduce. There are the mosquito fish, which I do have in here, but I have said, I, uh, what, what did I say? Oh, the birds pick them off. So that's what's going on there. I like the mollies over the mosquito fish, even though they're not as cold tolerant, that's okay, because this is all inside. So when they're outside, I just make sure to bring the tropicals in about probably a month to two months before the cold water fish. They seem to be adjusting all right. Uh, <laughs> can you even tell where they are? They're all hanging out together. Well, they were, okay, there we go. They're all together. The other mollies are doing well with them too. That great big blurry yellowy orange thing moving around down there, that's one of the other mollies. The other mollies kind of hang out around here. All the tropical fish seem to really like this corner over here. So I think that they'll all get acquainted. They'll be friends. Yeah, the other mollies that are in here are creamsicle mollies and sailfin mollies, and they blend in a lot with the goldfish so it's kind of hard to differentiate between them, but there they are. I'll try and get a better shot of them, like sometime when they come over closer to the edge of everything, and they'll feel a lot easier to see. The only thing I can say for sure is they need to be fattened up. They are skinny, skinny little mollies. The one over there that's just that white streak, that one in particular, yeah, they, they need to be fattened up. They don't need to be fat, but they, they're thin. They shouldn't have like an hourglass shape to them. That's not right. They don't, that's not, that's not how they're supposed to look. Since the sturgeon have to be fed twice a day, so does everybody else. I think that that'll do the trick for them. And they're eating. That's always the first thing I check for. Before I release fish, I throw food into the water like moments before I release the new fish. That way when the new fish are put in, they're not immediately harassed by all the other fish because that happens sometimes. Sometimes the existing fish will kind of go a little bit nutty over seeing new fish in the pond. So that way they're distracted and then I throw in a little bit of food right after I release and then I wait an hour and do a little bit more. I do it in very small amounts. But the first day, really the first three days I have new fish, they get fed a lot, but just I feed a little bit. So I feed frequently, but in smaller amounts, just to make sure that they're getting their food. And they've been eating. Then I wouldn't normally have like angelfish and the opaline garamis and things like that in here, but I had to do a small breakdown of my big freshwater tank because I was having some issues with string algae and I needed to bring down the nutrient level in the water and just made more sense to throw them out here. The water's nice and warm. It's okay, it's just for a few weeks, they'll be fine and I'll move them back in. Everyone's doing well together. I normally don't really like to mix goldfish with a bunch of tropical fish. I've always kept mollies and a few different types of danios together. The paradise gouramis, they seem to do okay. It's mostly just because the water temperatures fluctuate a little bit and really having stability and consistency is better. So to combat that, I've just been keeping my heaters at a fairly stable area. I'm not letting them fluctuate too terribly much just for the next couple of weeks. And the new guys, they seem to be getting along just fine. So since it's raining outside, I'm kind of just, I am I I don't know what else to do now. I was gonna go through and maybe throw a few things in the ground or talk about some stuff out there, but it's raining so, I guess to just wrap things up, this has been a good vlog. Did a lot of stuff, saw a lot of things. That time of year, new plants rolling in everywhere and lots of fun projects to do. I hope everybody's doing well. Got some fish food stuck in the flower. Get that out of there. Yeah, like I said, I hope everybody's doing well. Don't forget to like the video, it helps a ton, I appreciate it. 
I upload multiple times a week, so hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you know when new videos come out. Comment down below. Say hello. Say hi. Hi to everybody. Hope you all are doing well. Or you can hit me up on my social media. Say hi there. I use Instagram more than anything else. Uh, the rest of it's linked down below in the description. Follow me and I'll follow you back. As always and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye -bye.